Hey, how's it going, Yankees fans? This is Felix yet again for NYYNews.com. You already know. Hey, Yankees fans, the NY Post, George King, said the same thing I said. I released a video, and about 10 hours later, he wrote the same thing. Because it's common sense. The Yankees, as of now, are a wild card team, okay? A few people got offended. I mean, it's tough love. It's criticism. The Yankees, as of now, I'll even go as far as saying that the Mets have a better starting rotation than the New York Yankees. That rotation that the Yankees have now going up against the Red Sox, it's common sense. The Red Sox have a better rotation. And the Yankees last year went into the season with a legit bullpen. Their bullpen in 2017, such as 2016, was their strength. So I don't want to hear nothing about, oh, yeah, the Yankees' bullpen, it's dominant. Oh, uh, yeah, the bullpen couldn't get in the games because last year, Tanaka and a whole bunch of other pitchers were giving up a whole bunch of runs. So we didn't get to see the Yankees' bullpen shine until later into the season. We all saw it in September and October. That's when their team started to function on full cylinders. We didn't get to see that all year. And if you ask me, do we see a repeat of the Yankees starting rotation and their bullpen working together in 2018? We don't know that. So as of now, people are ignoring the fact that Tanaka had a horrible season until he turned it around. Like I said, come playoffs, come September, etc. He was so bad at one point that Tanaka was the least favorite player on the Yankees at one point. The Yankees were going to let him walk away from his contract. Okay? So you can't tell me that the Yankees have a good rotation that's going to take him to first place and into the World Series. The only reason why the Yankees went in that far into the playoffs because the Houston Astros faced the Boston Red Sox first. Yeah. If it would have been the other way around, let's say the Boston Red Sox facing the Yankees in the first round, we could have saw the Red Sox eliminate the Yankees. So yes, again, there's no point in having a strong bullpen if your rotation is going to give up a whole bunch of runs where, let's say, a Robertson can't come in and hold a lead, a Batances can't come in and hold a lead, a Green can't come in and hold a lead, a Chapman can't close out a game. There's no use in having a great bullpen like that if Tanaka is going to give up like over 30 home runs or other pitchers in the starting rotation, like maybe a CC Sabathia. We don't know how he comes back in 2018. Sure, his 2017 was legit, but he's going up there in age. Who knows what we're going to get from CC Sabathia? I know I've bashed Sonny Gray numerous times, but he's the only pitcher in that rotation as of now that seems legit starting at that three-hole. Not how all this propaganda was put out there that he's the Yankees' new ace, he's a certified number two or number one. No, he's a certified number three. And if he has a bad year, he's a certified number four-ish. Okay, So that's how I see Sonny Gray. He's going to be legit as a third starter. And again, was he worth Caprillion? Hell no. Caprillion, you could just see it in his face. You put Caprillion at Fenway facing the Red Sox, he's just going to eat them alive. He has that does he has that demeanor to him. He has like a Kirk Schilling face, uh, John Lackey face. He just has a gamer face where batters are just going to be intimidated to face him. He's 6'4", pure muscle. There's not like an inch of body fat on him. People keep saying he's injury prone, but... Whatever, yeah, that's your opinion. In my opinion, I believe James Caprillion to be a way better pitcher than Sonny Gray. Like I keep saying, Sonny Gray is up there in age. His velocity ain't returning at this point. So, whatever, he's the third pitcher in your rotation, and that's it. We all agree on that, or at least I agree on that. Also, in this article, which I'm going to leave in the description bar below or in the comments below, George King also outlined the fact that the Yankees really don't have a second baseman or third baseman yet. If you ask me, the Yankees went in reverse their whole second base and third base situation. 
obviously they haven't done anything yet and I made sure to include that in my previous video I said the Yankee second baseman situation is unproven third baseman is unproven and their starting rotation is unproven how is this team a first place team at best they are a wild card team and I'm glad a platform like the NY post really mirrored what I said onto their news platform because it's true the Yankees as of now are a wild card team Shore Torres is projected in being an all-star but let's say he starts in the minor leagues <laughs> who's your second baseman oh yeah Danny Espinosa a downgrade from Castro okay so now we get to third base where there's really not a backup for Andor. So it has to make you wonder, where are these Yankees fans coming from? Do they think logically? Can they take fair criticism about their team? I don't know. I don't understand these individuals. They got to think logically. They got to think with common sense. The Yankees, as of now, have gone in reverse when it has to do with their second baseman and third baseman they think oh we added stanton we're gonna be a first place team oh uh, no okay you need pitching pitching always wins you ball games okay we all saw that modern day murderers row come 2004 and the yankees even had a better rotation in 2004 so imagine in 2018 with that rotation supposedly they have another murderers row i mean really this is a wild card team what can the Yankees do at this point to make their starting rotation better? As the one Peter Samanetti of the Samanetti Report said this earlier, he said that the Rays are willing to deal Archer or order Rizzi to a team in their own division. I say order Rizzi is more logical for the Yankees because the Archer is going to cost you your whole farm system but like I said the Yankees can easily recoup on prospects by trading away a closer come trade deadline they got a whole bunch of closer type material out in the bullpen so uh, giving away a few prospects the Yankees can easily recoup on them let's say by training away a Robertson or Batances come trade deadline a team in contention Let's just hope the Yankees are still in contention and the Red Sox aren't winning the AL East by like 10 games by then. Because if they are, it can happen. The Yankees are going to become sellers at that point. Because there's a high chance that the Yankees go after A. Harper and Manny Machado. So, let's see. I hope that's not the case, but at this point, the Yankees are a wild card team. I'm sorry to say that, folks. Hey, if you guys want to get triggered by me saying that, it's just tough love. You can't come to me and tell me that the Yankees are a first place team when the Red Sox have a better rotation than them. And the Red Sox have a legit bullpen too, guys. Okay? You can't tell me that the Red Sox have a horrible team because they still have to upgrade. They are still gunning for adding a bat into their lineup. Have the Yankees gone stale? Who knows? It's starting to remind me of the 2017 season where the Yankees stood ideal. I mean, if you really analyze the moves that have been done this offseason, they haven't really made a lot of moves. I mean, one move fell on Cashman's lap, and then the other moves were of supposedly moving contracts and getting more outfielders that you don't need. So if you're not going to move those outfielders that you obtained, why keep them? Why have a whole bunch of outfielders on your team if you haven't moved Ellsbury yet? I mean, you got a better chance moving Blash at this point than you have Ellsbury. I mean, a lot of teams will take Ellsbury, but the thing is they don't want to look like they did a favor to or for the Yankees. So they're waiting for the Yankees to say, hey, we're going to give you prospects, take Ellsbury off of our hands, and let's just call it a day or a night. So yeah, the third baseman situation is really starting to scare me when it comes to the Yankees because like I said, they're going with a unproven player that really has just seen like one or two games in the major leagues to start third base and they haven't even obtained a backup for him. Imagine Ronald Torres being your season-long third baseman if something happens. I mean, that's horrible. 
and you guys are telling me that the Yankees are not a wild card team right now? Come on, man. That's a joke, man. Start taking constructive criticism about the Yankees. Take it at face value. Nobody's being a hater. Nobody's bashing the Yankees. It's tough love. The Yankees, as of now, are not, on paper, beating the Red Sox for first place. As simple as that. Sure, Stanton is a beast, okay? But pitching wins you ball games. Starting rotations have to go in deep or give you a chance to win so your bullpen can come in and save games for you and retain games for you. Simple as that. The Yankees, as of now, their starting rotation scares me. Yes, they need a solid ace. All around baseball, we see the, your Kershaws, your Keikles, your Klubers. The pictures you go to and consider your aces that carry your team all season long. The Yankees do not have that. Comprende? They do not. Yes, Severino can become a beast, but is he going to duplicate that success in 2018? We don't know. It's better for the Yankees to trade or sign a pitcher via free agency that has a track record that shows you that they are an ace. So as of now, even the NY Post is saying the same thing. What are the Yankees doing? As of now, they're a wild card team. Facts. It's a fact, folks. We have to deal with it, being Yankees fans. This is what the Yankees are as of now. Do they make moves? Who knows? So, as of always, this has been Felix from NYNews.com. Share, like, and subscribe. I will check you all next.